Hey everyone, welcome back to the Drum Sample Shop YouTube channel. If you're new to the channel, my name's Jake. Uh, and today we're going to be looking at how to uh, trigger some drum samples using MIDI. Uh, using a couple of different things. Um, mostly using Trigger, but also using a plugin called Massey DRT. So uh, let's get into it. We're here inside Pro Tools. Uh, and we've got some drum recordings uh, that I engineered for a song I produced. And my mate Nathan played these drums. Here, this is the end section of the song. Uh, sounds a little like this. solid playing there by Nathan. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, we've got our kick sample channel and we've got our snare sample channel. Um, and on both of them, we've got slate trigger. Uh, so, and we've got loaded in the samples. We've got a 22 kick from the US UK. And then on the snare, we've got, looks like the Payton tuning uh, of the 80s Galaxy from the Acro Man uh, sample pack. So, uh, what we're going to do, this is a brilliant way to trigger your samples um, using MIDI, which gives us loads of flexibility. It means that you can control the velocity, you can control timing, um, you can choose which drum hits you want to have a sample on and which ones you don't. Um, so what we're going to do first of all is we're going to select this end section. We're going to start with the kick. We're just going to focus on the kick and snare today. We're going to select the kick. I've just uh, made a cut here and I've got this end section. Um, so what we're going to do is um, it's, this this plugin is called Massey DRT. I've just got the demo version. So it's literally just the free version. Um, you can have a paid version which has loads more features. Um, but the demo version for simple uses like this is absolutely brilliant. So it's so good that they've made it free um, with a demo version that works so well. So we've, I'm going to go onto Audio Suite and I'm going to go down to Instrument. And here we've got Massey DRT. So I'm going to click Massey DRT. And because I've got this section of the drum uh, for the of the kick channel highlighted, um, I'm going to go in. And for those of you that might be familiar with uh, quantizing using Beat Detective, similar sort of process, we've got uh, Analyze button here. So if we hit Analyze, it's going to analyze that section of uh, audio. And we can see that it's basically giving us loads of markers, hit markers, basically, for where it thinks we want the kick to be picked up. Um, however, it looks like it's, I mean, that's a lot more than what the kick's actually playing. That's obviously bleed from other drums. So we're going to pull that sensitivity back and get a sweet spot for where we think actually it looks as though we're pretty much getting all the hits we want. It might be the case that um, we end up getting a few extra hits than what we want. And then afterwards, within the MIDI file, we can actually remove the ones that we don't want. Um, it's easier, I feel, to get more than you need in terms of sensitivity and pick up all the kicks, but then maybe a few like snare hit spills uh, than not get enough kicks and have to try and manually put them in. We don't want to have to do that. So we can change a few things here. That makes it a little easier. All of these controls all do something to help us reach our goal. Okay, I feel like we're probably about there. That feels good. So what we're going to do is now, this is the genius bit. We've got this amazing little top button here called MIDI drag and drop. So we've analyzed that end section. I've not done the whole song just for the purposes of the video, but we've analyzed that end section. And this is where we're at with the, uh, the hit markers. We're literally just going to hold on this MIDI drag and drop button. We're going to pull over onto our kick sample channel and we're going to drop it on. That's it. Okay. So now I'm going to exit out of Massey DRT. Now, what happens is that actually you have to drag. It doesn't just create a MIDI file just for that end section there. It will start the file from the beginning of the session. That's what it does in Pro Tools and actually most other doors. So we're going to pull that all the way to the beginning of the session. And then all these kicks are now lined up. So now, as you can see, I might raise this uh, height a little bit. We've got a MIDI 
no hit for all of these kick transients. Um, it's not absolutely perfect. Some of them, sometimes it's picked up a little bit of snare spill, like here. Uh, that that's a kick drum. That's a kick drum. That's a kick drum. But this bit here, it looks like it must be a maybe a snare spill or something. We'll find out soon. Uh, so the brilliant thing is now we've got within the MIDI file. Uh, we basically have. I'm gonna zoom out. Find all these hits that they are. We have all of these hits being played out on C0, okay, within the, the keyboard of MIDI notes. So we've got C0 is where all these hits are, uh, are sat, which means that as long as in our Slate Trigger plugin, we go to settings and we've got MIDI in, C0, all good. So now effectively, if we play the track from, let's say here, um, we should be triggering this sample here into our song. Let's have a little, little look. Brilliant. That's pretty darn close to what we want. Uh, the only thing I'm thinking about now is that it sounds like the velocity of the hits that have been dragged in from the Massey DRT um, sounds like they're a little low from what I want for this song anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on the MIDI file and zoom out, find these hits at the end again. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to have these are all highlighted. I'm just going to drag them up closer to the top of the velocity marker and then just see what that does basically and see if it gives us some some harder hits Sounds great. Sounds awesome. Uh, so the great thing about the MIDI file now, this is, I mean, when I learned this, it changed my life. Uh, the great thing about the MIDI file is that we can now, rather than having the Slate trigger plugin being triggered through the audio of a microphone, so let's say the actual kick mic, we, we send, let's say, a bus from the kick channel into the slate trigger channel, um, what happens is that all of that spill that you get from a microphone, if that's a problem, means that it you can't easily get around it. What's going to happen is you're going to be playing around with the input level of uh, of the of the slate trigger plugin, trying to work out how much audio level do I want in so that it's only triggering on the hits of the kick drum or the snare drum and not triggering on the spill just because of the volume of it. It might think it's, you know, confusing it with a kick with, with a kick or a snare. So the great thing is, is that with the MIDI, we can literally choose to do whatever we want. We could, cause it, it's a malleable um, track that I can choose to have the first kick a lot harder or, or a lot softer, or I can work out that i mean we we noticed earlier i think from the massive drt when we dragged it in that there that one there isn't actually a kick hit at all i think it's a bit of spill from the snare um so i can just delete that and it means that now i'm it's it's as clean as clean as you like Lovely. I think there might be another little spill hit somewhere just on from that one. Let's have a little look. Somewhere around here, I think. Yeah, that one there. Let's get rid of that one as well. Brilliant. I mean, it's so simple. 
And if we want, we can make it so that, I mean, the great thing about blending samples is that you can have uh, your all the dynamics coming from your microphone. So the playing of the drummer is giving you all of that natural feel. And then you can just blend in the samples really, I mean, almost like rigidly underneath. So if I wanted to, I could go to the velocity hits with all these highlighted and go down to vent operations, change velocity. And I can go to like, let's say what, like 120, how high is that? Yeah, great. So now they're all the exact same velocity, which means the same sample velocity and dynamic is going to be triggered every single time. And it just gives it maybe that level of consistency while still feeling natural because you've got the, the, the microphone blended in with it. And like you hear there, it can be pretty subtle um, to bring that kick in just so you can, the, 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 the sound of the kick mic and the sound of the kick sample, slightly different. The kick mic is a little more scooped, doesn't quite have as much uh, mid-range and doesn't quite have the same sort of upper mid attack as what the sample does. And they complement each other really nicely, so you can sort of blend them to, so it sounds really natural. Right, we're going to go through the exact same process now with the snare mic um, and just show you how that works. It works exactly the same, but we just go through the whole process again. So what we're going to do is we've got our snare sample channel here. We're going to highlight that end section of the snare top. We're going to go to audio suite. We're going to go to instrument. And we're going to go to Massey DLT and we are going to hit analyze. Here we go. It's gone absolutely crazy again. So we can bring that sensitivity right back down. This seems a little potentially a little easier. Um, but it might be the case that we still play around with these settings a bit. Like I say, I probably end up going a little bit more sort of overboard in terms of what I'm picking up um, so that I can add in uh, everything I need now and take away things later rather than the other way around. Let's go with that. Let's see what that does. Okay, so same process again. We've got a snare sample channel, MIDI drag and drop. Oh, genius. Come out of that. All the way back. Now we have our... Not bad, not bad at all. There's a couple of little hits that we didn't want in there, but we anticipated that, so that's totally fine. Easy things to fix. Let's have a little listen. That one there, that is a kick drum. That is not a snare hit. And I wonder if there might be another one. Maybe a couple more. Yeah, that one's all right. Great. So yeah, we can do the same thing as what we were doing earlier with uh, the kick drum. So, lovely sound, machine gun. So let's drag these up. So we're getting slightly higher velocity, but it's still got a natural feel. So I, I think the snare is a nice thing to leave um, with a bit more human dynamic to it rather than with a kick drum. Sometimes it's nice, especially in sort of rock pop music, the kick just be super consistent. Um, we all love a tight kick drum. Uh, but then with a snare, especially with rolls like this at the beginning, it's nice to... And it sounds super natural because it's taken the dynamic of the microphone hits and turned them into MIDI information. Um, and we can change them if we want. Like we can, at the moment, it looks like there's, you know, the, the first 
hit is down, the second hit goes up again, and actually we've got a sort of couple of lower hits in the middle, or actually if we wanted to, we can drag those down, and we're going to have it incrementally increasing the velocity as we go up, so it's sort of trying to match the actual dynamic of the feel. And then you still get all the human feel from the microphone, because we're blending. So let's have a little listen to that. Lovely. It's just the mic and this sample come in. As you can hear, there's probably a couple of hits that we didn't want in there, maybe. Not quite sure yet, that little section. Lost it. What was it here? Well, that was all right. That was okay as well. Maybe I misheard. Um, but yeah, great. So I mean, one thing is that we could uh, leave those fills as sort of matching dynamic. And then all of the main snare hits, we can make them all the same velocity if we wanted to. Let's go 120. There we go. There's a little fill there. All of these to be 120. Uh, all of these to be 120. All of these to be 120. And then all of those single snare hits in the groove are all exactly the same velocity, but then we're leaving a little bit of dynamic from the natural uh, MIDI capture for the fill the rocks. Love it. I missed another one of those little cheeky hits. Might have done. Yeah, there. Goodbye. Great. It's great. The MIDI is amazing though, because you can just, it's its so malleable. You can use it so easily. You can tell the drum samples that you're blending in exactly what you want them to do um, without relying on spill or inconsistent uh, signal from a microphone that might be triggering your, uh, your, your trigger plugin effectively. So yeah, there we go. And now I've got samples that make my song sound awesome. Love it. Once again, we've managed to use MIDI to trigger our drum samples allowing us to have more control over uh, elements like velocity, elements like timing if we need it, um, elements like what hits we want to be triggered and what hits we don't want to be triggered, especially if you want to have a song where, you know, I mean, one way would be that you could maybe mute your trigger channel, but otherwise you could, you could have the MIDI, MIDI file only have the drum hits coming in in the choruses. So in your verses, you could have no samples whatsoever and you might have a sample that you want to hit in the chorus and you've just got your MIDI, your MIDI hits and your MIDI information that just allows it to happen for the chorus, which is a, you know, a great and easy and simple tool um, to be able to manage your drum samples. Um, so there it is, there you have it. If you're new to this channel, we love it if you could like and subscribe. Um, and uh, you can go over to drum, at Drum Sample Shop on Instagram and follow us there for more information, other things that the rest of the team are getting up to. Um, and we'll see you in the next video. Nice one.